The Bible Treasury. A monthly magazine of papers on scriptural subjects. Article 10, Volume 11, 1876, and 1877. Part 2. Thoughts on Jacob. Genesis 28 verses 20 and 21. Still the earthen vessel, but the power of God, bearing about in the body the dying of Jesus, that now and ever the life of Jesus may be manifested in the body, truly also delivered unto death on account of Jesus, that Jesus' life may now be manifested in mortal flesh blessed, not in flesh, but in spirit. He is, it may be, in endurance, in afflictions, in necessities, straits, stripes, prisons, riots, labors, watchings, fastings, but is in the Holy Spirit, the power of God, always rejoicing, enriching many, possessing all things. Thus should he be walking, in flesh truly, but not according to flesh, warring according to God, leading captive every thought into the obedience of the Christ. Does Jacob chide in wrath when Laban feels his stuff, and finds not his stolen gods, saying, Thy rams have I not eaten, that which was torn I bear the loss of it? In the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night. And my sleep departed from my eyes. And thou hast changed my wages ten times? So another I also will boast as in folly. Another servant. One who served in love, for love, not money, announcing God's glad tidings gratuitously, receiving no hire from man for shepherding the flock, in everything, at every time, keeping himself from being a burden, to cut off opportunity from false apostles, deceitful workers, transformed ministers of Satan, who sped themselves, ate the fat, and clothed them with the wool, but fed not the flock, but he instead received stripes in excess, from Jews five times the full tale, forty saving one, was thrice scourged, once stoned, three times suffered shipwreck, passed in the deeper night and day, in perils of rivers, of robbers, from his own race and nations, in city, desert, sea, and among false brethren he spent his spell of service, in labor and toil, in watchings oft, in hunger, thirst, and fastings oft, in cold and nakedness. Thus could he chide with them, denying as they did his title to shepherd them, though giving proof of power from God, love to man, and willingness to be spent utterly. But more than this, from man had these things come, and so indeed, that through a window in a basket by the wall was he let down, but such a one was caught up into the third heaven, into paradise, and now was given him a thorn for the flesh, a messenger of Satan, that he might buffet him. Jacob could say, Ye know that with all my power I have served your father, and your father hath deceived me, and changed my wages ten times, and Jacob was wroth, and died with Liban. Paul can say, Most gladly, Therefore, will I rather boast in my weaknesses. Wherefore I will take pleasure in weaknesses, in insults, in necessities, in persecutions, in straits, but all for Christ, not Laban. Not for glory to himself, but for his Lord, not serving for a wife as Jacob, but filling up that which was behind of the tribulations of Christ in his flesh, for his body, the assembly, the bride of Christ jealous with the jealousy of God to espouse them unto one man, to present them a chaste virgin to Christ, not keeping them for himself, not baptizing to perpetuate his own name, herding the flock, but eating not the milk of it, not for a wife, keeping it as Jacob. Hosea 12 verse 12. It needed a prophet to bring Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved, but here is more than a prophet, an apostle called of Christ, in whom Christ spoke proved so in all endurance, signs, and wonders, and works of power. It wanted such a one to bring the flock of Christ from that which was spiritually Sodom and Egypt from Sinai, the place of law. The apostle who brought out the church of God has passed away, but God by his word of grace is able to build up and make wise unto salvation. Jacob's service led God's flock to Egypt. Moses' message brought them thence, to leave them under law, a sore bondage, a prophet like to him are more than Solomon in wisdom, in preaching more than Jonas, stirred up unbelief, to cast aside and crucify the Saviour. An apostle from the great apostle in God's glory, Jesus of Nazareth, was sent to bring God's scattered children into one. The Son had come from the Father, died on the cross, and went to the Father, that they might be gathered. 
now he reveals himself from heaven to Saul, catches him up into the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body he cannot tell, God knows, that to reveal unutterable things, gives him a thorn in the flesh, and sends him back to earth to effectuate his purpose. Besought and urged in such a fashion, by such motives do they own the Spirit's unity? Nay, there are strifes. One says, I am this, another, I am of that, until schism, division, heresy is the universal character of Christendom, souls plunged in deeper sorrow, held in more cruel bondage, bound with heavier jives, or scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Just as though Christ had never lived, and died, and risen again, nor sent from heaven the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel by the mouth of Paul. Thus in his flesh he bears a thorn, a messenger of Satan no messenger of God, as Jacob had. For this he thrice besought the Lord that it might depart from him, without avail. Thrice he prayed in trust and faith, the wish ungranted, that the grace of Christ might rest upon him, and his strength be perfected in his servant's weakness, a weakness such as hindered in the flesh his servant's work, so that, for his master's sake, he earnestly besought it might depart from him, a pricking briar, a grieving thorn, that made him feel that flesh was there. Numbers 34 verse 55, nor let remain supinely, but which made him feel he had a will apart from his Lord's mind, one minding to serve God, it might be, still of himself, and powerless for good. He needed, therefore, thorough brokenness, since a conscious acting will in man, whether the purpose be for good or ill, springs from revolt, and man born after Adam's likeness only can be used through self set aside, and reckoned dead. How instructive is the difference in the Son come to do his Father's will, to raise up a temple, to save the world, to gather worshippers of the Father. His very food it was to do his will, it was his comfort, and the strengthening of his soul, sowing work indeed. Unto the spilling of his lifeblood upon the ground. Yet doing nothing from himself, but whatever he sees the Father doing, doing in like manner. No need of brokenness, since able to do nothing of himself because of perfect oneness with the Father, yet therefore working everything in perfect self sufficiency and perfect power, but in the Son's obedient perfectness, having life and judgment in and from himself, given of the Father, in power over all to give life and deal out judgment. He sought not his will, but the Father's that had sent him, surely himself doing the work but works given him of the Father, doing not his own will, but is that sent him, casting out or losing nothing he had given him. For this is his Father's will, that everyone who sees the Son and believes on him, should have life eternal, and he will raise him up at the last day. Because of the Father, he lived, so they who feed on him should live because of him. Thus by his power, through his Father's will, raising up a temple in himself, giving his flesh for the life of the world saving every one given him of the Father, communicating eternal life, and the Holy Spirit, that they may be spiritual worshippers, and raising them up at the last day, an holy temple in the Lord. Thrice prayed Jesus, in view of the cup he had to drink. Three aspects did it bear to him as a man having to do with earthly things. The foremost thought was, My Father, thy will be done. Matthew 26 verse 42, then came in his will as son, O will his father was both able and all willing should be done, Abba Father, take away this cup from me. Mark 14 verse 36, the second view it, therefore, bore for him was his will set aside. Not what I will. But when in conflict, he prayed more intently, and his sweat became as great drops of blood falling down upon the earth. Luke 22 verse 44, it is because these two desires mingle into one. He prays that his will, be it what it may, should be eschewed, the Father's only done, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Luke 22 verse 42. Thrice Paul besought, God's will unknown, it might depart from him, the thorn that found his flesh to rankle in, and made him know that flesh was the thorn the object, not the will of God that which hindered his efficiency, the messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. Thrice Jesus prayed that not his own will, but the Father's, might be done. The cup mixed for others drunk by him, and taking hold of him, because it was God's wrath, came in but by the way, though pressed upon him by the ruler of the world, the wielder of the power of death and darkness. And when, as Son in the Father and the Father in him, he had poured out the fullness of communion in this oneness, 
saying, Those thou hast given me I have guarded, and not one of them is perished, John 17 verse 12, and had drunk in spirit to its dregs, and wrung them out, the cup his father gave him, then he goes forth, saying, I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Paul, the faithful steward, thrice besought that the thorn for the flesh might depart from him, in this, his will be done. The holy servant Jesus prayed intently three times, fearing the cup, not my will, thine be done. Three times Jacob parleys with the Lord. Three times by craft had lie procured his ends ends ordered of the Lord. He takes away his brother's birthright, his blessing, and his uncle's herds, but throughout Jacob's prayer is that his will, not God's, be done. Thrice had Isaac failed to bestow the blessing in its fullness therefore the Lord brings Jacob out to a certain place, the sun being set, the stones of that place being for his pillow, and in a vision of the night gives him an unstinted meed of blessing, the promise is first, to thee will I give the land whereon thou lest, and to thy seed. Then is the blessing, in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Thus, comes first the birthright, which is to the heir according to promise. Then the blessing which runs in the genealogy, the first dependent for its enjoyment upon faith and patience, the latter absolute, and inseparable from the stock. See the perfect fruition of this mere seed sown first in Abraham, Galatians 3 verses 6 to 14. In thee, all the nations shall be blessed blessed with Abraham his blessing. Here is the blessing first, justification of life. The absolute blessing running inalienably in the line of the chosen seed, afterwards the promise, Galatians 3 verses 15 to 29, Galatians 4 verses 1 to 7, the birthright, the inheritance on the principle of promise made, to thy seed, not to seeds as of many, but as of one, even Christ, but ye all are one in Christ Jesus, but if ye are of Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, heirs according to promise. Thus the Gentiles being God's sons by faith in Christ Jesus, and the Jew redeemed from under law, that he may receive sonship, God sends out the spirit of his son into their hearts, crying Abba, Father. In the passage now before us, God gave Jacob the birthright the inheritance by promise and the blessing inalienable in the seed, in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Besides, he says, I am with thee. But Jacob is a merchant lusting after flesh, desiring to lay up treasure to himself, therefore bargains he with God, and vows a vow, but lust of flesh in hidden energy is the active cause, and bursts forth instantly that flesh is seen. He looked. What filled his eyes? A well, three flocks, Rachel and the sheep of Lebanon. Hitherto flesh lust had wrought, coveting the unseen things the birthright and the blessing, now I lust is added, though, perhaps, to Jacob's self unknown. Flesh to the full unfills his lust. Leah, Rachel, at Laban's offer, since suiting Jacob's will, then Blaha, urged by Rachel, just meeting, it may be, his heart's thought. Lastly, Zilpah, Leah's gift, acceptable to him. Jacob calls it righteousness, just what he ought to have, but, still unsatisfied. He wanders farther in his crooked paths, in conscious craft, he works to take his fill of flesh, and having got it, hastens to depart. But knowing that the balances of deceit are in his hand, he carefully puts from him the thought of God, and not thy will be done with chiding claims from man his rights. But God's grace does not leave him, though he say, I am become rich, I have found out substance in all my labours, they shall find non iniquity in me that were sin. Yet his God would have him dwell in Succoth, and know no God but him, for there is no Saviour beside him. So the angels of God meet him, and he forces Jacob, by dint of fear, to weep, and make supplication to him. His own will he had done in providing for himself, though God had wrought it. Now he has power over the angel, and prevails to have the blessing in his own way not God's will and way moved by the lust of his eyes the things which are seen. The glory of the unseen God is out of his thought. God had shown truth and mercies to what? A servant? Now he pleads the mother and the children. Jacob selfish at the bottom. He gets his heart's desire, but is blessed there. His course runs in God's way, and yet a thwart, who smites him not, but withers up his strength and utter contrast to the steps of Christ. Jacob says in heart, My will be done, 
and his his flesh, afterwards his cry is, not thy will seemingly to get a blessing, really asking that God's will should be set aside. He grants this prayer, and blesses him, but there. That for which he asks he has. He got the flesh he lusted for, and now he keeps it. He has provided for his own house, but his conscience tells him God's house has been quite uncared for, left in far off use, a bare stone, and grudging the needed outlay and supply to raise and keep it, therefore necessarily his prayer must be, not thy will be done. For this end he is willing to give up the cattle, if that the mother and the children may be spared, but at bottom it is Jacob's self he clings to, for there lies lust of flesh, which says, my will be done. From thence act I lust, saying, Not thy will be done. May we turn aside to see this great sight a man tempted, and failing not? Also note the perfectness of God's revelation. Matthew sees the beloved Son fulfilling God the Father's will and counsels. God only is set before him. My Father, thy will be done. Matthew 26 verse 42, Therefore he is carried by the Spirit, as thus not led nor driven, answering the tempter, who by craft opposes God, by bringing God himself upon the scene, and his spoken will. Every word which goes out through God's mouth. No lust of flesh is in him, but as man mere dependence on the will of God. My father, thy will be done. Then in order comes trust in God, not flesh working by sight, not hankering to see some acknowledgement from God that he was with him. His voice and word had been enough not tempting God, however plausibly, by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Exodus 17 verse 7. The words, to keep thee, Luke 6 verse 10, are left out here. They passed his ear unheeded, as this cry filled his soul, My Father, thy will be done. In due place the third temptation, pride of life, proceeds. The two last show the evil one unveiled and Jesus, with the will of God alone in view, is taken by him thus not led, a very high mountain is the place, the kingdoms of the world and their glory the scene, and these are more looked at as connected with the will of God more the systems than the men composing them. Filled thus with God's mind, and God's will before him, instantly the wrath of Jesus flames forth on the foe. Get thee away, Satan. Turn now to Mark 1, all here is active energy. The Spirit drives him out Abba, Father, not what I will. Amazed, oppressed in spirit, and his soul soon full of grief one long outlook to the end one long prayer that his will, good, holy, and acceptable, should not be willed, but God's. Self, divinely perfect, set aside all touching only self unnoted, he is a servant only, no pride of life. Luke now claims attention. Father, not my will, thine be done is here his thought, and by the Spirit he is led to meet the unveiled devil with whom he had to cope, who, if departing from him for a time, would come again in the power of darkness, so that the whole land and the sun should be darkened. So the devil Jesus answered, and we find the word of God man's life. Man, even the son of man, on God depending, not on what flesh desires. Nay, even not my will. Therefore follows the further truth, Father, thy will be done no pride of life. Led up as a man into a high mountain, shown the kingdoms of the habitable world in a moment of time, all that could captivate or seduce a man, offered him then and there, for whom all things were made. In the calmness of his prayer, Father, thy will be done, he says, it is written, thou shalt do homage to the Lord thy God. Now, as a man to go forth with the prayer upon his lips, Father, not my will, thine be done he asked not to see aught as proof that God would keep him. God was with him of a truth. He will not tempt the Lord. No lust of eyes was in him. John gives us the one come from the Father, going to the Father, glorifying him upon the earth, completing the work given him to do. Therefore the circumstances falling, by the way, are unrecorded. The meeting while, with word at the onset, and power with prayer at its close, have no place. It is the Word who is God, the only begotten Son, declaring God his Father, giving signs on earth, but eternal life and spirit for heavenly worshippers. We have seen the lust of the flesh in Jacob as a merchant bargaining to get it filled. If God will, I will. Also the lust of the eyes, by which flesh acts. 
he seeks, by holding deceitful balances, to get and keep his gain. I am become two bands. Deliver me the mother and the children. Thou sayest, I will surely do thee good. Whether first or last, it is Jacob still, and I lust working. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and, behold, Esau. So Jacob acts as guided by his eyes, and settles his surroundings by himself, not the Lord his center. He put first the handmaid and their children foremost, Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost, and he went first, and bowed himself to the ground seven times, forgetful of the word of God and the blessing he had schemed to get. How God delights to own an act of grace! The merest fragment of that work which he had seen was very good and blessed. Would God manifest in flesh illustrate perfectly the grace of God the Father? These very words he chooses to reveal the workings of his heart. He ran, fell on his neck, and covered him with kisses. But see the reason why the Spirit draws attention to this scene. Where was Esau's action like to God's? Or Jacob's as the conscience stricken sinner born of Adam? Is it not in this that, as the prodigal had thought to win his father's favor by fair words, it was the goings forth of self born love, long ere a whisper could have reached his ear of good or ill? that moved the father with compassion, seeing his wretched son a great way off. Thus Jacob, vainly puffed up by a fleshly mind, a man independent, has no understanding of free grace in God nor man, but counts himself or power in himself before God, and able to do something, even though it were only to own Jehovah his God, to make a stone his house, and of what he gave to render back a tenth. As to man, supplanted and deceived, he cannot credit him with grace wrong thoughts of God so thoroughly had warped his mind, that nature even he cannot rightly judge. In order to begin right in heart, or mind, or act, one must be right with God. Just see how vain are Jacob's plans to buy a pardon with a present, yet perhaps he claims the honor of the happy issue. Jacob said, I will appease him with a present. I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. But he saw had not even seen the women servants and men servants, or flocks, and asses, and oxen, until he had wept upon his brother's neck, and then he lifted up his eyes, and saw the women and children, and said, Who are these? And as to the droves, he knew not what it meant till Jacob told him, and then he took it not as price of pardon, but as Jacob's blessing. The same principles are shown, whether in a fragment of nature ruined, yet bearing the stamp of God's creation or in Godhead manifested, grace, free, full, unbought, unfettered, springing from itself, which works to satisfy itself in blessing others, measuring the blessing by itself, not the object. We have seen the self-existent man depending wholly, and the one who lived by a life supplied from God unsubject. The one had said, My father, thy will be done. The other, Give me my wife. Now we enter on another stage. That one had said, Abba, Father, not what I will. This one says in heart, not what thou wilt. The Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers. And Jacob had even dreamt that God had said, Return unto the land of thy kindred, and had he not risen up to go to Isaac his father, and to Esau he affirmed, I come unto my Lord to see her. But what does he? Jacob came to Shalem and pitched his tent before the city, and even buys a parcel of a field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamer, Shechem's father, for a hundred lambs. See margin. Notice here, this was no sepulchre bought for a sum of money, it was Abraham alone did thus. Jacob buys a place to live in, purchasing from man God's gift to him, even as before he got by craft God's gift of grace and Isaac's blessing, giving up the rights of God indeed denying them, in order to repurchase for himself. Machpelah before Ma, the same is Hebron in the land of Canaan, and the field and the cave that is therein, did Abraham buy for four hundred shekels of silver for a possession of a burying place of the sons of Heth, standing for the rights of God, owning his rights in God, owning indeed the curse and the children of it, and the title they had under it, according to the word, Cursed be Canaan. As a burying place to Canaan it belonged, for such a purpose a possession must be bought. But if to live in, then the land belongs to Abraham as Lord, for so the word by Noah had been spoken, Canaan shall be his servant. Abraham buys a place to bury in, and lives in it. 
Jacob bargains for a parcel of a field to live in, and it becomes a place of judgment, death and burial. How divinely accurate the scriptures! When Jacob in his faith is looked at, and to faith is standing for the fathers, then it tells how they were placed in the sepulcher which Abraham bought for a sum of money. But if the faith of Joseph fix the eye of the believer, then in him the scripture says, Our fathers were carried over to Sikkim. Of the sons of Emma, the father of Sikkim. No mention of a sepulchre, nor purchase, for to faith. However, many lambs might be the price, the portion Jacob took out of the hand of the Amorite with his sword and with his bow. Wondrous are the ways of God. That which man will not do in fellowship with him, he does perforce, while faith denies man's deed and owns God's work. Genesis 48 verse 22. Why does God confirm the outcome of an act of fierce anger, cruel wrath, that brings a curse? Because if not, his way and grace might be impugned. Man in nature has no rights, for life and strength are forfeited to God. Blessing flows from grace. Right comes by faith to man. If anything is due to him, it is wrath alone, else were grace set aside. So when God's man, Jacob, holds as valid the title of the world, God, that he may bring grace in truth, must own it too. Thence comes the Passover in Egypt, the sprinkling of the blood, the cross of Christ, and the archangel's voice. Thus is Jacob all things to all men, if by any means he might profit himself, willing enough to return to the land of his kindred, but not to his kindred as God had said, for between him and them stood the place of sacrifice and obedience to God. Genesis 31 verses 3, 11 and 12, knowing God's will, if told to do whatever he had said. To Esau he replied, I come to see her. God's long suffering leaves him not until the utmost bounds are overstepped. Succoth is in the path of God though its limit. Still, can he deal in grace? Jacob is not yet the die cast before the eyes of men, by which the beauty of God's moral ways should be esteemed, therefore he can bless. And Jacob built him a house, and made booths for his cattle in peace. A stranger, still unknown of men few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it but holding to the everlasting covenant of God. Therefore he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Man's ways, how low and groveling! God's way is one of grace and faithfulness glorious in holiness. He desired mercy and not sacrifice, but Jacob, like Adam, transgressed the covenant the everlasting covenant. God said unto Abraham, I will give unto thee and to thy seed the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. To Jacob Jehovah said, The land whereon thou lest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. If Esau despised his birthright, Jacob bartered God's rights for a portion and peace with the Canaanites, dealing treachery against the Lord. Were it possible, he as heir, had cut off the entail forever from himself and seed, since he parted with his right as God's heir, that he might hold in his own right, grounded on the title of the Canaanite. Thus he passed over from the paths of God into the way of Cain, who loved honor and slew his brother, who, out from the presence of Jehovah, dwelt in the land of Nod wandering. And builded a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch dedicated owning God in independence. So Jacob, moved by a fleshly mind, stands in God's land, not in independence only, but defection, wrapping it up with all under the cover of Israel's God. For when he bought a parcel of a field, of the hand of the children of Hamer, he erected there an altar, and called it Hello Israel. But there was no truth nor mercy, nor knowledge of God, but soon to be instead, swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, thus breaking out, and blood touching blood, because they had left off to take heed to the Lord. Jacob is his name, but the Lord will plead with Israel, for he hath a controversy with his people. Will, he not know Jehovah's righteousness? What had he done to him? Brought out of Padan Aram, redeemed from the house of servants. For according to God's reckoning, not Jacob's righteousness, was Laban forced to give him wages, Genesis 30 verse 33, Genesis 31 verses 10 to 13, by his angel brought out, Remember now, O Jacob, 
what the Syrian Laban had consulted, and God had answered him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Forced thus to take Jehovah's ground, and act in grace, now Laban seeks a string in his own heart which even Jacob's hand can harp upon, self-seeking, rash and wrathful Jacob. Has Jacob daughters? Laban says, My daughters. Children? My children. Cattle? My cattle. All that thou sest, Laban says, is mine. This is Jehovah's righteousness. His way of grace he takes his springs of action from himself, blinding as it were, his eyes to all the object is, he gives a gift and blesses the receiver for the gift's sake, since the gift is of himself. Not this alone. He takes the gifted one out from his old place and gives him a new standing where all things are of God. Jehovah follows him from Mizpah unto Peniel, meets him there, and wrestling, withers him, so that no more Jacob is his name, but Israel, and he blessed him there in the name and place of God's appointment. See the counterpart of this in Israel's history. Jehovah gives a gift, his presence, and a king, when prophet, priest, and handmaid of the Lord had failed, been set aside as instruments of power. Then God uses money loving, lust tempting Balaam, to unveil the vision of the Almighty, take up his parable, and declare not only that the righteous rise again, but God, beholding his own gift, sees no iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. But more than this, God narrows up his circling glories nearer to himself. Jacob, placed in kinship with his God, is drawn by every eddying wave of grace closer to the center all things tend to and evolve from. Nothing now against him is Jacob, elect of God, redeemed, all things also for him, as God's new man Israel, washed from the old, and as new set apart for God his workmanship. But nearer still, wrapped into that which is itself divine, sanctified, accepted, graced as a beloved who can give a blessing, once hated as a supplanter, now goodly as the trees of linaloes which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters, blessing those that bless him, because in him is one, a gift of God, who shall come a star out of Jacob, a scepter rising out of Israel. Thus he saw, moved by sovereign grace, his circumstances being ruled of God that he may act his part, himself unwitting, sets forth Godlike grace. His love wells over on the neck of him once hated as a cheat and liar. Why? I have enough, my brother. My soul is satisfied, and can run over in a shoreless stream. The glut of blessing is so great that mere relief, a thing on which it may be poured, is in itself a blessing. What odds how deep, how wide, nay, bottomless the pit? A oh Jacob! So much the better! Its emptiness, its fitness, and the very wages of its worthlessness become a blessing and its means. This is Jehovah's righteousness, will he not know it? The fount of love, outgushing from the depths of God, flows from above, burst up from the fathomless abyss, and in divine all filling fullness floats frail Jacob, fragrant in its fragrance, back into God himself. But there, what is that flood? Water from a Saviour's side on Calvary. Water in the Word by Jesus used in glory in the Father's house. A sea of glass like crystal before the throne. God is love and light, and all swept onward unto him by its almighty tide must be thus in it, on earth by faith. Jacob chosen, wrought of God, and planted, washed, sanctified, and justified, redeemed and graced, knowing Jehovah's righteousness, must judge and cleanse himself and walk in light. At Peniel God accepted him. At Succoth he built booths, but he remembers not, and therefore knows not Jehovah's righteousness. Slipping clean out of God's paths, giving up God's right. For Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Sheshem, which is in the land of Canaan. Pitched his tent before the city, and he bought a parcel of a field, where he had spread his tent. And he erected him an altar and called it El Elo Israel. Wherewith shall I come before Jehovah, or bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with cuffs of a year old? While there are yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked one Jehovah's voice cries, Shall I count them pure with wicked balances? For they are full of violence, have spoken lies, and in their mouth, they have a deceitful tongue. He is a merchant buying the gifts of God of Luz, at Mahanaim, he holds the balances of deceit, at Peniel he loveth to oppress. 
How sad! How solemn! Tremble now before the Lord. Do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with thy God. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. Unright with God, unrighteous towards men. The smallest seed of flesh which turns from God's grace branches out till fruitful with widespread misery. They covet fields and take by violence, and houses, and take them away, so they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. The while ye have an altar, LLO Israel. Now is God's ground of government at stake, and Jacob must be forced to loose his grasp and quit his purchase. Is the spirit of Jehovah straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Ye pull off the robe from them that pass by securely as men averse from war. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses. I desired mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings, but ye not only smite them that are sore and heal them not, nor restore those that are out of the way, but also cut off from the blessings of the land those in possession, to have God's covenant. Matthew 10 verse 13, Matthew 11 verse 7. The little leaven kneaded with the dough, and left to work unseen, unjudged in the fire of God's light and love, should, but for grace, soon leaven all the lump, and their own heart become an oven, hot and burning as a flaming fire, to devour them all. Jacob, he bath mixed himself among the people, he is a cake not turned, half Sheshemite, half Israelite, half judged, the other half untouched by fire. He begged for flesh, has got it? kept it for himself. Corrupted is it? Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you. Jacob in the land is seemingly for God, but really in revolt and joined to the usurper. So judgment, not of faith, but from the Lord must come, lest he should be polluted with his rest. And Dinah went out to see the daughters of the land, and Shechem saw her, and took her and defiled her, and his soul clave unto Dinah, he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. You begged to have your blessing in your hand. How have you kept it? You gathered all together, now you dissipate it. You join yourselves to the citizens of that country now, as it were. You feed their swine, and, worse than all, you long to fill your belly with the husks the swine are eating. At Peniel thou saidst, Give me the share that falls to me. At Sheshem thou dost by a field, and Dinah is defiled by Sheshem, thy sons by deceit, and Simeon and Levi instruments of cruelty, fierce anger, and cruel wrath are cursed, and thou dost hold thy peace. Thou art a silly dove without heart. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. They have transgressed against me. I will change their glory unto shame. I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. So at another time, when Israel joined himself unto Balpia Jehovah said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before Jehovah against the sun. So here was folly wrought in Israel. Which ought not to have been done matter of grief and wrath a horrible thing in Israel. Israel is defiled and Jacob holds his peace. Wail and howl, go stripped and naked, for the beginning of the sin. The transgressions of Israel were found in thee. In crafty malice, lust of gain, do Israel's sons give men God's title to possess the land, and he, who counted it so worthless as to found his tenure on another's rights, would little scruple to barter circumcision, the reproach of Christ, separation from the world of the ungodly, the seal of faith, the sign of God's inheritance, for treasure in the world. Unlike the one who came from God, found in the world a treasure, alienate, sold away through sin, held of right in the usurper's hand, and for the joy of it goes and sells all whatever he has and buys the right to all. These despise the cross, the reproach of the circumcision, and have to endure shame. These cut off from grace, thus bringing into judgment, the men averse from war, the women and their children, therefore they shall not dwell in Jehovah's land, but shall return to Egypt. Egypt shall gather them, Memphis shall bury them. The days of visitation, the days of recompense are come. Israel is swallowed up now, but know Jehovah's thought, and understand his counsel. Yet will he bring an heir unto thee, who shall go before them to preserve their souls. When they were sore, two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, 
took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly, and slew all the males, and they slew Hamer and Sheshem his son with the edge of the sword. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city. They took their sheep, and their oxen, and their asses, and that which was in the city, and that which was in the field, and all their wealth, and all their little ones, and their wives, and spoiled even all that was in the house, and Jacob holds his peace. Firstly, giving up God's right for gain, he now denies the validity of his title. But this, because he is himself in view. So setting self between his eye and God, it is all as though there were no God. Simeon and Levi say, should he deal with our sister as with an harlot? Making her honor cover their covetousness. At least is Jacob honest, for he says, ye have troubled me to make me to stink. And I shall be destroyed, I and my house. Jehovah's name at Peniel, unsaid, unknown, that Jacob may be blessed there. At Sheshem, heritage of God, his portion, God's title is ignored. Knowledge is rejected. He will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to him. Though God's name and portion are the set aside, yet he holds his peace, that grace in blessing may go out to Jacob. One only hope is left in this extremity. All Jacob has is lost in principle. God's title to the whole land set aside, Sheshem's right quite blotted out by blood. Jacob holds by force that only which he stands upon, and he but few in number, ready to perish. To Jacob, had the promise been without condition, the land whereon thou list, to thee will I give it. If Jacob cannot stand where he has striven, will he lie where God has given? Will he take a place of thorough nothingness? At Peniel with a touch God withered up his strength, let faith lie down at Bethel helpless. A place of stones which Jacob owned as God's, the house of God, the gate of heaven, where the ladder was set up on the earth, and Jehovah stood above, unfolding all his mercy. To thee and to thy seed. In thee and in thy seed. I am with thee, and will keep thee, and will bring thee again into this land. And Jacob was afraid. It was in Jehovah's mind to take out Jacob for himself, in Jacob's to get back to his father's house in peace. At Bethel all may be retrieved. Impossible with man, with God all things are possible. Let but his right be owned, though to a place to lie on, and a stone set for a house. Yet Jehovah can stand above, and, in the name and place of his appointment, of his house, his portion, and a priest. Will faith triumph and grace be understood? Then Israel shall be the priest, Bethel the house, praise God's portion. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Jacob then was not two bands, but a man with nothing rightly of his own, and him asleep. Brought out from his kindred and his father's house, where God's blessing rested, that he might be set apart by God fitted for his priest and sent back from Jehovah in new place, and power, and appointment. To him God comes in all embracing grace, setting him in this, his nothingness, within the glorious flood of the divine purpose and action. This place must he recognize again, no longer nothing in the helplessness of sleep, but nothing in the testing blast of Jehovah's face, not only motionless but moveless. It was Abraham's faith to come from Mesopotamia and keep in Canaan. It was Jacob's faith to abide at Bethel whilst Jehovah's plans matured, building there an altar as in the van of God's witnesses, if flesh will wander, God covenants to give preserving grace, till from that base in faith, and with God's power, he conquer all the land, deplorable indeed is his return. The strange gods which were in their hand, and the earrings which were in their ears. Jacob hides under the oak which was by Sheshem, and they journeyed. Filled with ill-gotten gains, they go with their flocks and herds to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him, he having withdrawn himself from them. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for Jacob has forestalled his portion in God's inheritance and lost it, has sacrificed God's rights to propitiate the world, and foolishly earned their hatred, having staked God's covenant in pledge of peace and amity, and it was forfeited. One spot alone was then left, this deserted, all was lost to Jacob. It was dedicated by him to the Lord if he fulfilled his promise. Hitherto this had been kept, and would be to the end, ever therefore must it be the Lord's. This is Jehovah's grace, 
his righteousness. Remember now, O Israel, that you may know it. In this parcel of a field secured eternally by every right of God and man, bound ever and forever unto God. Unlissable. God's grace, Jehovah's righteousness gives Jacob an abiding place and portion to possess. Is this God's strange work? Nay. Ever acts he thus? Bethel, Gilgal, Calvary each tell the tale. At Shalem Jacob mixes himself among the people. God will change their glory into shame, testify the pride of Israel to his face, hanging his dishonor in the light, for he had seen a horrible thing, Israel is defiled and knows it not. This is in grace. At Shechem flesh is brought by fraud and force to Israel, and God in grace and truth by word and power forces Jacob to depart, blotting out transgression and unpardonable guilt with blood, shed by the cruel hands of lawless men, making thus atonement. Will Jacob know God's reckoning, and put away all witness of the deed in zeal for him? Nay. Jacob judges Laban's gods and says, Be clean and change your garments, but holds with a ching palm unrighteous gains. He may hide the strange gods and their earrings under the oak which was by Shechem, but they go with flocks and herds to seek the Lord. In grace and righteousness Jehovah will go and return to his place, till they acknowledge their offense, and seek his face. Will Jacob take this two days journey from the place of death to life, and life in resurrection on the third day? See Israel going out to join with flesh at Balpia, and Jehovah said to Moses, Hang them up before the Lord against the sun. Then Zimri brings flesh in unto his brethren in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation, and Phineas rose up, and took a javelin, and went into the tent, and thrust both of them through. He was jealous for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Covering up their sin with blood, and turning away his wrath by atonement. Gilgal corresponds to Bethel. The Jehovah rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off them blessed grace this is his righteousness. Will not Israel trust Jehovah? If a Moses judge, he must hang them up. If a fine ears, they must be smitten through. But if Jehovah judge, and Israel is in faith. A Joshua circumcises them, and they abide there until they are whole. Again, if Israel is defiled among the people, and his two sons take up judgment, the defilement must be met by the defiler's blood. If defilement is brought to Jacob, and he has zeal for God, his household must not only put away the strange gods, and be clean, and change their garments, but, as a man responsible to God, he must be swept from off the land. Arise ye, and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. Thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. But grace has one resource still left. Let but Jehovah judge. He will sweep Jacob as such off the scene, but in the new man, Israel, invest him with his title in new standing altogether. Remember now. That ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Arise, go up to Bethel, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. May it not he said that God gives up his portion that Jacob may be blessed. If Jacob in simplicity obeys, all that God promised him at first, may even now be taken up in God's right, if he will go back in heart and mind to that time, but Jehovah's name cannot be made known till God's new man comes upon the scene. Will Jacob then remember and know the goodness and long suffering of God? Nay, he comes far short of God's thought and his own blessing, for he says, I will make the an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. He owns the God who delivered Jacob and his bands at Peniel, and blessed him there, not alone allowing willingly the hiding of Jehovah's name, but alike indifferent to his new name in which the secret of his blessing lay. When was the day of his distress? Not Leus, but Jabok. God would recall Bethel to his mind, Jacob's thoughts turned back to Peniel. Jehovah poured out grace at Bethel, but at Peniel Jacob sought for, and by power procured a blessing after his own mind. The God of glory he pairs down in thought to such an one who was with him in the way which he went a crooked way, a transgressing way indeed. Jacob clings to his experience, not God's word. God cleaves to his word, and is not bound by Jacob's conscience. If in blind unbelief, flesh rests the word, yet it fails not. To faith and doubtless deep in Jacob's heart, seen but by God, the knowledge lay, that at Peniel, 
it was no fleeing from, but going forth, to meet his brother Esau, though swayed by feelings, Jacob says, Peniel was the day of my distress, wherein I fled from Esau's face. But when he builds his altar, calling it El Bethel, God stamps it as the place where he appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. Jacob's thought was on the time of his experience, God's on the place of his appointment. But once again, now fixed forever, Jacob prevails to have his way, and lo! The place which should have been the house of God becomes an oak of weeping. All, all had failed, and Jacob's vow was unperformed in any item. In spite of Peniel and Bethel, not one jot of Jacob's word had come to pass. Jehovah was not owned as his God, the stone set for a pillar was not made God's house, and a tenth of God's gifts were not given him, unknown it might be. Yet Jehovah was his God, though he may call the place God, the God of Bethel. He might build the altar and forget the house, but God had his house, and if a tenth of God's gifts is in question, he will not deny his rights, he will take it. Jehovah can wait, but who can resist his will? If Jacob will not do, another must, perchance a Moses or a greater still. And now ere Jacob is definitively fixed in the place of his ultimate attainment, Deborah dies the proof of Jehovah's faithfulness, the lightest touch of that strong hand which should bereave them of their children, and cast them away because they will not hearken, and make them wanderers among the nations. They have returned, but not to the Most High, they are like a deceitful bow, it starts aside, and wounds the hand that bends it. They cry, We know thee but have transgressed against his covenant. Jehovah accepteth them not, now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins, they shall go into Egypt. Jehovah's name unknown, his house disregarded, his portion uncared for, his covenant transgressed cannot remain? Yes, Jacob. Jehovah's blessing in abeyance his new name unrevealed. Abraham's blessing intermittent. God's everlasting covenant, in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Jacob's blessing spent, I am with thee and will keep thee, and will bring thee again unto this land, I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Into this land, this very spot, he has returned with what result? To Bethel he has come again, Jehovah he knows not. The stone set up as God's house marks no point for him. To limit is all one with Shalem, so El Bethel is but a lambat youth no gate of heaven, but an oak of weeping. God's eternal counsels never fail. Driven back by unbelief into himself while fixing Jacob in his place on earth, as Jacob a supplanter, thy name is Jacob. He hangs his purposes, even as to Jacob's promise is the birthright with a mess of pottage bought upon the new man Israel, thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name and he called his name Israel. Be fruitful and multiply, a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins, and the Lord which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee will I give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. The blessing forfeited forever from Israel, the promise, the birthright only left, but he, the heir who takes it up, responsible and able to maintain is he whom God has separated from his brethren that he may be also the depository of the blessing. At the outset Jacob had been found as grapes in the wilderness, as the first tripe in the fig tree at her first time, the object of God's redemption and regard. He went to Shalem, separated himself unto that shame, and their abominations were according as they loved. But all their wickedness, the climax and sum total, is in Bethel, then it finds its full fruition. The last resource of God for Jacob fails, and blessing is no longer possible, therefore then he hated them. Bethel should have been a place of blessing, but he found the Jacob still, therefore will he drive them out of his house, he will love them no more, and at Bethel, there begins destruction and the curse. Jacob is cast away, but God will call his son Israel, the new man out of Egypt. As Jacob is passed over, no longer in God's reckoning is holding Canaan in fief and Israel in faith, God's Israel, is alone in view in this promise, so God went up from him in the place where he talked with him, never more to own him in his record, whilst in the land of Canaan, until by faith he goes out to God's separated man in Egypt. All is now lost for Jacob as such, he may set up a pillar, a pillar of stone, 
preface his act of worship with an offering of thanksgiving, and call the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel, but it goes for naught, he has no heart, and God no grace, until in Egypt he shall find his forerunner, God there. Therefore shall they be as the morning cloud, and as the early dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney. Yet is Jehovah his God, he shall know him, for there is no saviour but him. He had respect to Jacob in a place of stones, a land of drought, and led him into pasture, but with God's provision Jacob filled himself, taking his ease, eating, drinking, and making merry, was not rich towards him, forgetting him. Therefore was he to them as a lion, a leopard watching by the way, as a bereaved bear, meeting them to rend their heart's call. If Israel hath destroyed himself and the Lord's voice grieth, yet in him is help, and the man of wisdom sees his name, hears the rod, and who hath appointed it. What is the path of faith for those who are the little flock when all things earthly fail? Seek ye the kingdom of God, provide yourselves a treasure in the heavens which faileth not, for God who clothes the grass will keep you, and the Father will give you the kingdom, since he who comes to cast a fire on the earth, and has already kindled it, though haply but a feeble flicker, a Deborah dying, he, a greater than Joseph, though like to him, is himself baptized with a baptism of death, a fire of judgment, Jonas being the sign as plainly as a western cloud foretells a shower, or a south wind heat, to deliver from hell those who hear the word of God and keep it. Them will he ransom from the power of the grave, he will redeem them from death. O death! He will be thy plagues. O grave! He will be thy destruction. And in the new covenant in his blood all shall not only be retrieved, but in him the last Adam, the second man. Death has been swallowed up in victory, for the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin, the law, but thanks to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So if it be the assembly which is his body, or those who shall fill up the number of his elect at his coming, or Israel restored, it is through the blood, and in the resurrection life and power of him who came to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, and in grace and power will first bring perfectly into possession those who had no promise of an earthly portion, and were not responsible to him in it, and by the same grace will thereafter introduce as heir of heavenly blessing those who will fully have forfeited their earthly birthright, and not only so, but relinquish it when brought to them in God's title. They journeyed from Bethel. Sad sentence. The climax of their course of pride. The final turning off from mercy. Hitherto had grace lingered. Now they are cast off forever. The limit of long suffering is reached and overpassed. No help remains. No longer Canaan, but Egypt is their lot. All lost. Forever lost. Darkness closes o'er the scene. Woe! Woe unalterable is fixed eternally. Journeyed from Bethel. A fleeing from the face of God, hiding from him, a damning out the source of blessing from his soul has marked the course of Jacob from the first, setting a stone, his wives, his herds, a heap, his bands, a stream, a parcel of a field, an altar between his soul and God. And now the end has come, a second time the sentence has gone forth, journeyed from Bethel. Surely the record of the Spirit states the fact, it may be, with groans that cannot be uttered. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Jacob, as a witness for Jehovah's name, is blotted out. As priest, and raiser of Jehovah's house is passed away. As worshipper, to render him his due, is cast aside. Journeyed from Bethel, and Jehovah's soul unsatisfied. Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the grape gleanings of the vintage, there is no cluster to eat. My soul desire the first tripe fruit. When helpless, at the first time, in the wilderness, he had found Israel like grapes, as the first tripe in the fig tree, but now the best of them is as a briar, the most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy visitation cometh now shall be their perplexity. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephraim. Israel hath forgotten, but God remembers, not only all their wickedness, so that their own doings have beset them about, and the sorrows of a travailing woman have come upon him, but in divine grace, though the place which should have been the beginning of his fruitfulness and strength, becomes a monument of his affliction, 
Yet he who remembered the barren woman to give her a son, also will remember in that day the faith that counted on Jehovah's boundless power and goodwill, saying, The Lord shall add to me another son. Thus unconscious faith prophesies of grace, and Jehovah's way in rolling away reproach, by giving in a son life, deliverance, and power. Jehovah remembers his own counsels, and hearkens to the voice of prayer. He sees the ways of men, and acts accordingly. Faith trusts the Lord, but Rachel has to learn that in resurrection only is the life and power that for nature must her voice be heard in rumor, lamentation and bitter weeping weeping for her children, and no comfort, because they are not. Yet, thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping, and thine eyes from tears, for in the power of him who is in resurrection shall they come again from the land of the enemy, and there is help in the after time. If Benjamin bear rule, it must be in the power of Joseph, rejected, delivered up, exalted, and he must in the meanwhile be a son of sorrow. The birthright in abeyance, even the promise of inheritance, but the blessing shall be bestowed in the person of the man he sent before them, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters he was laid in iron until the time that his word came the word of the Lord tried him. Israel must also come into Egypt, and Jacob sojourn in the land of Ham. Jehovah reckons nothing till Joseph come to Egypt, faith then can follow, and God meet Jacob on the ground of mercy, a son of sorrow on the way to Egypt, yet a Joseph that to be exalted, so that all should bow the knee, and the saviour of the world. While Rachel wept, but to be called out of Egypt a son of power, though little, yet a ruler. But at that time they shall not go from Bethlehem to Edar, but from Edar to Bethlehem. Michael 4 verse 8. Michael 5 verse 2, and the first dominion shall come to the tower of the flock, the strength of the daughter of Zion, the daughter of Jerusalem. Meanwhile the daughter of Zion shall be in pain and labor to bring forth, like a woman in travail, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go to Babylon, and there shalt thou be delivered, there the Lord shall redeem thee. But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, thou art little. Out of thee shall he come forth to me that is to be ruler in Israel. Therefore, the first dominion shall come to Judah's remnant, scattered as a flock without a shepherd, but when gathered, though but few, and shepherded, then shall the horn be iron and the hoof brass, and they shall beat in pieces many peoples. When using power falsely, Judah smites the judge of Israel on the cheek, therefore, till he, the everlasting one, takes up the government, they shall be given up but when out of their travail he comes forth in manifested power as head of Israel, the whole nation shall be owned, and all Israel be saved. And Rachel died, and was buried in the way to Ephrat, which is Bethlehem, and Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. From her came forth the son who carried into Egypt, was made ruler there and thence Jacob's power begins while the godly remnant mourns, as from the grave of Israel's hope, because her children are not and the place which should have been the starting point of every blessing becomes a grave. Thus is Israel's history, as God's witness, bound betwixt two pillars, the first securing to him, unwitting, Laban's gods, the last marking the place where she, who in ignorance and natural religion had hid them the poor of the flock passes from connection with Israel forever, until the son called out from Egypt comes up in the power of resurrection, and the son of sorrow becomes the son of the right hand her grave, thus become the occasion of Gentile mercy, is, on the ground of mercy, a house of bread to many nations. The power of nature fails to uphold anything, it must be by the gift of grace and mercy. Ephrata, Bethlehem, is man's order fruitfulness before blessing, Genesis 35 verse 19, blessing, then fruitfulness, Bethlehem Ephrata, Michael 5 verse 2, is God's way. They have now not believed in Gentile mercy, in order that they also may be objects of mercy. The Deliverer shall come out from Egypt. He shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Edah, Bethlehem, Zion mark his course, not Bethel, Ephrat, Edah, as Israel's, for unto Edah unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, thou Bethlehem Ephrata, out of thee shall he come forth unto me, to be ruler in Israel, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion. Now draws Israel's sad history towards a close, as responsible in the land. 
It came to pass, when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilha, and Israel heard it. The son dishonoreth the father, a man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore faith will look unto the Lord, and he who loves God's truth not alone obeys, as Abram, getting out of country, kindred, father's house, but is content to waive all right to that which in God's promise was his inheritance. Israel understands not the things which are for his peace, the blessing in him and in his seed, and in his heart withholds the birthright, the inheritance, from Reuben, whose right it was, therefore is he a man cast loose, a wanderer, with no tie in all the land. He must go forth to Egypt, and faith owns the just decree, being ready to go hither, thither, at the word of God, even if it were from off the ground of promise, confiding in the power of God, the God of the living. It flees from place to place, witnessing of a rejected one, counting all things lost for his sake, content to be a little one, with little earthly blessing, that he may be greatest in the kingdom when the heavens rule, a friend of publicans and sinners, that wisdom may be justified of her children. It leaves home, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, and receives in this time a hundredfold with persecution. Israel heard it. Jacob heard, and held his peace when folly had been wrought in Israel. In silence, and unwittingly, had God's claims been denied. In grief and pentaproth he disinherits Reuben in his heart. Thus what he would not do by faith, he does in inconsiderate haste. If faith fails to move man, force goads him to God's goal. Thus, with wives, twelve sons, and cattle and beasts, and all the substance which he had got in paid in Aram, Jacob came unto Isaac his father, unto Ma, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. To him Ephrat of Bethlehem was as paid in Aram, to him Canaan was not God's land, oblivious, like Lot, of the word, Canaan shall he his servant. Forgetful of the covenant, I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, regardless of the promise, the land whereon thou lest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. Israel dwelt in that land, the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. A sad declension. With God's title deeds he bought peace, and a portion with the Amorites to dwell in, making thereof destruction and a grave, but, worse than this, he turns his father's sepulchre into a dwelling place. With all things lost, if he but take the path of one cast out, he may walk therein in fellowship with God. How good it is to know God's present truth, and act upon it. Thus to do would be at least to make requital for the wrong done he saw, and what as a Canaanite he bought in avarice, and got confirmed by fraud with balances of deceit, then seized by force he loveth to oppress that might he now in lowly grace give up. But no. His eye saw, his hand took, his lust holds, and he saw, in mere grace of nature, profane as he is, takes God's part, for Esau took his wives, and his sons, and his daughters, and all the persons of his house, and his cattle, and all his beasts, and all his substance which he had got in the land of Canaan, and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob, for their riches were more than that they might dwell together, and the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwelt he saw in Mount Seir. In nature's grace, God's providence and faithfulness in seen things, Esau drinks deeply of his blessing consistent and persistent in his course, pressing forward in his line of things to lay hold of the promise set before him, unconsciously the instrument on Jacob's failure, whereby God's election, purpose, and calling are established. The elder shall serve the younger. Serving him by selling him his birthright a paltry price to pay for such a portion yet prevailing to procure a blessing and in the order of God's providence, which answers nature, breaking from off his neck his brother's yoke when, lust unworking, and in the strength of nature's hardihood, he heeds not Canaan's fruitful plains, wherefrom his wealth of wives and children, goods and cattle, had been gathered, but leaves them in the hold of coveting, amassing Jacob, and goes forth to a land of rocks and separation. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir and dukes and kings come of him ere the reigns any king over the children of Israel. So, by force and nature's grace regaining, as it were, his birthright on independent grounds, he takes dominion in the cast-off place, 
breaking his brother's yoke from off his neck.